Hello, this is Tim DeLeon from Focus First, and this short tutorial is how to create your scattergram. I'll be doing this tutorial on a Mac, but it works the same way as on a PC. If there's any differences, I'll be sure to point them out. Now we're going to assume that you've already listened to several of the other tutorials, that you already do know how to export data from your MLS, you have an overall understanding of the visual pricing system, and also that you know how to select data on your MLS data form. Now we've already read in the export file. To create our scattergram, we need to go to the Pricing tab. Once we select the Pricing tab, we see the MLS data form. As you're probably aware from watching the other videos, the scattergram is not created automatically for you. So let's select data to put on our scattergram. We'll just use the Select Scattergram Data dialog box. Of course, the default is to select all the sold activity that has sold in the last six months. Now, it turns out in this area, the market is very seasonal so if we just looked at data in the last six months, we wouldn't have much to see. So for this example, we'll look at all activity for the last year. Now we can see the selection that was made. So let's assume we're going to price a two-story property. So usually when I'm pricing a two-story property, I will only want to compare it to other two-story properties. So let's sort on two-story properties. Okay, now let's get rid of the other floor plans so we'll only show two-story properties on this scattergram. Now to create your scattergram, position your cursor over the scattergram heading and right-click and select the Create Scattergram Graph option. Now you see there's several options that you can make use of when you create your scattergram. Most of these options are fairly straightforward. First of all, in this section right here, you can choose to graph total square feet, finished square feet, or the number of bedrooms. Now, your area may not include both total square feet and finished square feet, and there's some areas that don't include either. If that's your area, you probably know that. As you probably do know, in real estate, size matters. If everything else is equal, homes that are larger in size will sell for more. In most cases, being able to graph either total square feet or finished square feet will give you the best results. However, if your area does not support that, you are able to graph the number of bedrooms. While graphing the number of bedrooms isn't as good as graphing the total square feet or finished square feet, the number of bedrooms can be an indicator of the size of home, so that can work effectively. Now for this sample, we'll graph the total square feet. We often get the question, well, should we graph total square feet or finished square feet? My answer is, try them both. What we're looking for is a correlation between price and size. When we have a correlation, then it's much easier to price properties. In our case, I generally will graph total square feet. Down below here, we can decide if we should create the trend line, show value boxes, and or the data point information. For scattergram, I almost always will create the trend line when I take my first look at things. So let's look at that. The show value boxes can be a great help in showing you where you can get more size for the price. If you select this option, you'll see a text box placed in the upper left and a text box in the lower right summarizing the values. Let's see what that will look like as well. The last option will leave blank for now and we'll come back to it when we show you what that does later. So let's create our scattergram. Okay, the scattergram is complete. Now to find the scattergram we notice that there's now a new tab down below which is lab labeled PSgram which is short for pricing scattergram. When we select this tab we'll be able to see the scattergram. Let me point out a few things on this chart. Uh, the first is that the left hand side we show the price of the properties that are sold. On the bottom we show the size of the properties. Each data point represents one of the homes that have sold. You can put your cursor over the data point to show the price and the size associated with that data point. On the upper left and lower right are the value boxes. Properties closer to this box have less space for the dollar and properties which are closer to this box have more space for the dollar. In general, homes nearer to this box would have more value. Now we say in general because we still need to look at the condition and special features of the individual homes before we make that assumption. This blue line here is a trend line. As you can see, there's a strong correlation between price and size. Now what that means is for this area, most of the data points are right on the trend line. Now we do see some exceptions. As you'll see, this point, this data point is much higher than the trend line, and this data point down here is much lower than the trend line. Scattergrams are great tools for helping folks price their property. 
they are a great way to visually see where homes may need to be priced at. When we price properties, we like to consider five factors. Location, price, and size of homes that have sold recently, and then special features and condition. You're able to see all five of these factors on one graph at one time. On this current graph, we can see the location. All these properties are in somewhat comparable location. They're all in the same subdivision or neighborhood. There still may, might be some nuances with the subdivision. For example, a property might back to a busy street or it might back to a green belt. If that's the case, we'll handle that nuance when we consider the special features and condition. Of course, on this graph, you can easily see the price the properties have sold for and their size. So the last factors that need to be considered are the special features and condition. Now we recommend that you highlight the special features and condition by putting text boxes alongside each data point to summarize those special features and condition. And of course this program will do that for you. To show you that, we just need to recreate the scattergram. So let's go back to the MLS datasheet and let's create that scattergram. As before, once we select the Create Scattergram option, we get the Create Scattergram dialog box. These are the options that we had previously set. This time, let's select the Show Data Point information. This will create a text box for each data point, and let's also remove the value text boxes. Okay? Now let's look at the scattergram. As you can see, we now have several boxes on the upper left part of the screen. These are all the text boxes which we created. We don't automatically put them next to data points because we found that if we do, they hide other data points. You can easily find which text box goes with which data point by putting your cursor over a data point and then finding the box that matches. For example, if we put our cursor over this data point, we can see that it has 3492 total square feet. So then we can look at our text boxes and find this property, which in this case is 631 Metal Run. That's the match. We can then move it down there closer to the data point. To move it, we need to select it and then move our cursor over the edge where we see our cursor change to four arrows. Be careful not to move it near the corners. If you move it to the corners, it'll change to two arrows. And if you change the two arrows, it'll reshape the text box. These text boxes are set to automatically reshape based on the text in the box. Let's move this text box nearer to the data point. Once we do that, we can edit the text box and add in the features and condition to fully describe this property. For this box, we would first need to determine why this property is so far above the trend line. And how would we find out that reason? We would need to look at the detailed MLS sheet. Once we figured that out, all we need to do is put that information in the text box. Once we do that for the text boxes that we feel are of interest, we would then have all five factors of how you price property on one chart. Now we may not want to make use of all these text boxes. If we're looking for properties in the lower price range, we may find that these text boxes for the higher price range is less interesting. So we can just select the respective boxes and delete them. Now I'm holding down the shift key as I select boxes and then I'll just press my delete button and get rid of the text boxes that I'm not interested in. To delete one box, just select the edge again where you see the four arrows and then hit the delete button. Once you've completed the scattergram, we like to present this graph by using the script, are you willing to list your property at fair market value? Most people will give you one of two answers. The first is yes. The second is, well, what is fair market value? Then you can go into your scripts. By the way, we have put all the scripts that we use in the tutorial section as well, so please take a look at the links down below. We know that you'll find the scattergram an effective tool for showing your clients how their home compares to other homes. Thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to watch some of our other videos. And don't forget to press the like button below.